Hey guys, it's Joe Glines from The Automator, and um, I want, I'm going through my scripts that I used to use a lot when I worked in corporate America, and um, one of the things that I used to do was uh, do a lot of SQL queries. And so here's an example where, you know, pro someone will come to you and say, hey, I want to, I want to, I'm looking for this part in or whatever, and they give you, you know, a lot of items to put in an in-list query. And uh, here I have nearly 3,000, um, just as an example, because in PL SQL, when I was using it, it, uh, it would cap out at 999, you can use an in-list. Now, granted, there's better ways to write queries, you know, I understand that with uh, using some fuzzy logic or even a regular expression or something. But let's say you have those lists. It actually works very fast, even with 3,000, 5,000 items on an in-list versus uh, using a matching patterns. But um, it, it, it can take a time to convert this because you need it into a like single quote, comma, quote, delimited pattern. So I wrote a script. Let me just show how it works. And I can come in here and I can hit a button. And bam, there it goes. And, and notice it even broke it into groups of 909. If I go to the end of this one, you'll see that last one is 999, right? That's why I numbered them. And then, so I even broke little sections to remind me this is the thousand, I should have put like thousand one to two thousand, two thousand one to three thousand, right? And maybe the first one. But um, I could then come in here and copy this and paste it into my query. And if you're wondering also why I don't have a single quote at the beginning of each of these lines or at the ends, um, it's because in my SQL template, I would already have like, um, you know, we're searching at the table, then we're looking um, in and, and this, is what I would already have here in my template. So this would allow me just to, to come up here, cut it or copy it and paste and there, I'm ready to go and do the next one and the next one, right? So it was a really easy way for me to, to take that crazy list. Now, if you wanted to back them out, um, I have it set up where you can highlight it and then hold control shift I and it dumps them back out of that format in case you decided you didn't want them. Maybe you should have deduped them or uppercased and deduped uh, and I have scripts for those. I'm not showing it in this video. Uh, I'm, I'm parsing this one out. Let me let me come in here a little and just walk through, but I'll share the code. So uh, I have a function right here. Uh, here's my hotkey, and I should have had a single instance force up here just to make sure. Let me add that so when I share this, it'll be there. There we go. That way it won't launch more than one time. And this function, if we jump down to it, it says, hey, first backup the clipboard into this variable, uh, blank the clipboard, send control C, wait until there's something in the clipboard. And if not, go ahead and restore that clipboard and just return and be done. Actually, let's throws up a message box and there was an error. Um, however, after doing that, it'll copy it all to the clipboard and it returns the clip back, which is what you stored originally that way later. And I should have demonstrated this. Um, let me demonstrate here. So if I say Joe and I cut this, so right now that's on my clipboard and now I come in here and hit control I, but look, if I paste, it still has Joe, right? That's because I backed up the clipboard first, did my work on the clipboard, manipulating it, well, ripping out the clipboard, manipulate it, shove it back in the clipboard, and then restore the clipboard to the original content. That way I don't lose what was on my clipboard. It makes it really seamless to be able to do all this stuff without, um, that's interesting. Something happened here on those. Oh, I think it's because I, uh, I had uh, ripped out some stuff. If we come back to here, this is how I, I generated that. Um, I don't think there's a problem with the script. It'll, yeah, it does it correctly. Um, it's when I brought them out from the other way and transposed it, they they no longer had those line breaks. Or I had them in there and I should have gone and looked at them. So uh, let's get back to this actual script. Um, and so after we do that, uh, that was just for testing. I can get rid of that. Uh, I first go through and trim both sides because you don't want to have spaces on either side of those, just in case so that comes up a lot. And these are defaults. Of course, you could turn these off or change them. Like I, I often would actually uppercase them. I think you could do this and that would uppercase it if I remember correctly. Um, let's go ahead and save this. Do that. I'm going to highlight it all. And actually, I don't know. Let me go back. I don't know if I ran it. There we go. Now, control I. Nope, that was not the right way. Um, well, there is a way to do it. Uh, I, yeah, I thought that there must be something else next to the I that you put there. Uh, is it dollar sign U? Nope. 
So let's not worry about it. Um, but there is a way that you can you could have uppercased it, or of course I could have just uppercased it somewhere else. But that's going through and doing that, and then uh, we, we're trimming out some other uh, looks like the commas and um, and the single quotes escaping them, I think. And then we go through, and this is the loop where we say, hey. Uh, do this 998 times and then basically stop. So we're in a loop and then this is where I add that incremented value. Um, this is where it puts it in there. So I could have done a little more math in here and had it say what range, but you know, this was just, I was using it. So I didn't really care because I knew exactly what it was. Um, and then uh, dump it all back into the clipboard. Um, oh, this is getting rid of that last comma and then going back and sending the paste. Right, so so this is the restore. So this is the clipboard paste and restore. So down here, it'll come in, it'll send paste, it'll sleep a bit, because if you don't sleep, um, it'll be it'll actually cause a problem. The clipboard doesn't get restored properly. And then I restore the original clipboard back to that backed up variable, which I passed as a parameter here. Uh, also note, I have a default time of 600, so a little bit over a half a second to sleep, and that's what this is passing in here. You could increase or decrease that if you wanted to. Um, I, 600 is fine. A half a second is not a lot to wait, right? It, uh, as a human, I mean, the computer, it's an eternity. But uh, yeah, it's a super cool little script that allows you to really focus on, you know, doing your query work, not taking the stupid list someone sent you or that you got and that you then have to go parse it and put it into a good format. I hope that helps. Cheers.